Firm Motorsports has officially announced their 2023 NASCAR Cup Series driver lineup, and Haley Deegan will drive for Thor Sport Racing full-time in 2023. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to the video. we got a ton of NASCAR and other motorsports stories discussed here today on the channel. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into those really, really quickly. We're going to start by talking about Columbia. As it was announced on Wednesday morning that Columbia has signed a multi-year extension to continue sponsoring 2311 Racing and Bubba Walls. This also means there will be increased primaries for Bubba Walls in 2023. I believe Columbia sponsored Bubba for four or five races in 2022, so I would think that increased primaries would be around seven to eight races, a couple more primaries because Bubba's got a lot of sponsors, so they're probably going to sponsor Bubba Walls for a lot more races in 2023. Really, really exciting news for sure, and happy to see the Columbia will continue in sponsoring Bubble Walls in 2023 and for the next couple of years. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Kimberly Clark. As it was announced this morning that Kimberly Clark has ele elevated its partnership with JTG Doherty Racing for the 2023 season. They'll sponsor them with different companies that they have in the Kimberly Clark program in 2023, including Cotton now, which will sponsor Ricky Senhouse Jr. in the 2023 Daytona 500. Great to see a company like Kimberly Clark is stepping up the plate and sponsor the company for multiple races in 2023. I think the car actually looks really solid. I'm planning to do a video on that paint schemes in the future, but it looks really, really good. And excited to see that Kimberly Clark will sponsor Ricky Senhouse Jr. for multiple races, including the Daytona 500 of Cotton now in 2023. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Saudi Arabia. As it was reported yesterday, by, I believe it was by Andrew Benson, that Saudi Arabia will be hosting the opener of the 2024 Formula One season. It was also revealed the Australian Grand Prix has been extended in Melbourne two more years through 2037. Saudi Arabia will open up the season in 2024. I think they're opening up the season maybe in 2023 as well. But they'll kick off the season in the Middle East. Not the biggest fan of the track. It does attract a lot of people around them. A lot of people do go, go to the races. I'm just not a big fan of the track itself. But it's good to see that they will open up the season in 2024. And now we're going to head to the next story of today's episode is we're talking about Real Response. As it was announced yesterday, the NASCAR's partnered up with Real Response, which works to help with mental health issues. Real Response helped a lot of companies in different sports, including colleges, players, and athletes across the country, and helps with mental health. This is a really good organization that NASCAR's partnered up. This is a massive dub for NASCAR, in my opinion, for people to go to who struggle with this kind of stuff. I think this is a really, really good thing. Very happy to see NASCAR's partnered up with this, and I think this is a really good decision for the sport in my honest opinion and now we're going to head jump on to the next story of today's episode as we're going to talk about kyle bush as we're going to look back at kyle bush's joe gibbs racing stats for his career obviously kyle bush will not be returning to Richards racing will not be returning to joe gibbs racing in 2023 as he joins richard children's racing and you look at his stats at joe gibbs racing he scored two NASCAR Cup Series championships, those being 2015 and 2019. He scored 56 NASCAR Cup Series victories, and this does include all the exhibition races he won. He had 206 top fives, 304 top tens, and less 17,338 laps. Kyle Busch was an incredible driver at Joe Gibbs Racing, the greatest driver in Joe Gibbs Racing history. And I don't think any driver, maybe outside of Christopher Bell right now, I don't think any driver will be able to match Kyle Busch's stats in the history of Joe Gibbs Racing. So congratulations to Kyle Busch on an incredible career. Joe Gibbs Racing will begin the transition over to Richard Schultz Racing in 2023. He's already been working on that transition. Paint schemes have been revealed. And also, he's already been winning races with the team. So maybe Kyle Busch can, he's not going to match those statistics, but maybe Kyle Busch will get some pretty good statistics at Richard Schultz Racing heading into 2023. I think he's got a good shot to do that in 2023 to help with those statistics. And now we're going to go ahead and jump on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Mick Schumacher. As it was announced yesterday that Mick Schumacher has signed as reserve driver for Mercedes in 2023. This also confirms that Mick Schumacher will not be part of Haas' organization. He's also parted away from the Ferrari development program. Mick Schumacher, the pastor, drove for Haas and did have some good runs near the end of the year, struggled at the beginning of the season. But near the end of the year, Mick Schumacher really started coming in his zone and started performing 
a lot better as a driver. It's a shame that Mick Schumacher will not be racing in 2023 on a full-time basis, but I'm not really surprised there wasn't any rides available. Sadly, at least he will be the reserve driver in case Lewis Hamilton or George Russell do end up missing a race. They've got Mick Schumacher there, and he'll also be able to get some practice sessions with Mercedes as well. And maybe, just maybe, 2024, we could see Mick Schumacher get an opportunity to drive full-time for Mercedes, which is very interesting and could happen. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. But he will be the reserve driver for Mercedes heading into the 2023 season. And now we're going to head to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about the L.A. Coliseum. As yesterday, construction began on the Los Angeles Coliseum. Obviously, the Los Angeles Coliseum race is about 50 days away. 50 days from tomorrow, as a matter of fact, is the Bush Light Clash at the LA Coliseum. I think this is a little bit later that they're constructing it than last year. I think they began constructing in late November, maybe early December. We're in the middle of December now, and Christmas is coming around the corner, and they just began building the track. Now, Kyle Larson, of course, was out there basically beginning the digging on the ground as well. So Kyle Larson was out there. He actually answered some questions from the media, certain people that I know who were out there basically asking him questions as well. But it's really cool to see that they're working on construction and building the Los Angeles Coliseum for the Bushlight Clash, which is 51 days away from today. And we're really starting to get close to the 2023 season. I'm really getting hyped up, and construction has officially begun on the Los Angeles Coliseum. And now we're going to head to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about the 2023 Rolex 24 at Daytona. As it was officially revealed yesterday that the 2023 Rolex 24 is going to have a full 60 car field for Dexter's Rolex 24 at Daytona. Now, the number is only 60 because of the fact that the GTP cars are going to be longer in the pit boxes. And a big reason why is because of the attraction of the GTP cars. I believe there are going to be nine GTP cars, which is a big DPI series, quintessential it's replacing DPI. It's basically going to be the big series. It is going to have nine cars competing for the overall win in the 2023 Rolex 24. If you're a fan of this, it's going to be really fun, I think. It's exciting to see the Rolex 24 has a lot of people showing up in it, and there's a lot of GTD cars, GTLM cars, you name it, and GTD Pro, GTD M. There's a lot of teams showing up in 2023. It's exciting to see that there's going to be a full 60-car field in this year's upcoming Rolex 24 at Daytona. And now we're going to head jump on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Lance McGrew. As it was announced yesterday that Lance McGrew will be retired from Hendrick Motorsports. Lance McGrew has been with Hendrick Motorsports since 1999. And he has crew chief Brian Vickers to his Bush Series Championship in 2003. And also unfortunately crew chief for Dale Jr. during the few years where Dale Jr. really, really struggled. Lance McGrew will be at least known for being the guy who led Brian Vickers to his only NASCAR Xfinity Series title. But he really won't be known as the greatest crew chief, but he's been with Hendrick Motorsports for a very long time. And has put up a lot of great work with the team over the years. So congratulations on a great career, Lance, and we're wishing you the best of luck going forward. But congratulations on a great career with the Hendrick Motorsports group, and we wish you the best of luck going forward. But he has unfortunately retired from Hendrick Motorsports. To some people, including Dale Jr. fans, it's going to be fortunate. But to others who have been in the industry for a long time, it's going to be very unfortunate. But... Congratulations on a great career to Lance McGrew, and we wish him the best of luck going forward into the future and his future endeavors and whatever he decides to do going forward into the future. And now we're going to head to the next story of today's episode, is we're going to talk about the Thor Sport Crew Chief lineup. Now we're going to talk about Thor Sport here in just a little bit more, but Thor Sport's Crew Chief lineup has been a Fisher Veal. So Haley Deegan is going to have Rich Luscious in 2023. Ty Majeski will have Joe Shear Jr. Ben Rhodes will have Jared Prince, and Matt Crafton will have Shane Wilson once again. Obviously, there's more to talk about when it comes to store sport, which we'll talk about here in the not-so-distant future. But I think that's a very solid crew chief lineup. Very interesting changes going on over at Thor Sport Racing as we head into 2023, as that will be the crew chief lineup for next year. We'll see how much success 
all four of these people can do. I think this is very interesting that Thor's four has made some pretty big shakeups. Of course, Ben Rose losing his crew chief of Rich Luscious as Rich goes over to work with Haley Deegan next year. But that is the crew chief lineup heading into the 2023 season for Thor Sport, and we'll see what happens. But that is your crew chief lineup for Thor Sport Racing heading into 2023. We'll see how well they perform and how the combinations work together in 2023. And now we're going to go ahead, Javon, to the next story of today's episode, as we're talking about the Milwaukee Mile. Now, something I haven't talked much about the channel on the channel, really since it was announced that NASCAR will be returning to Milwaukee Mile for the Craftsman Truck Series in 2023, is that the Milwaukee Mile has had some things that they've been working on when it comes to basic repairs and improvements on the track. Well, $3 million in improvements and repairs have been approved by the state and by the state legislator, and they will be approved to be worked on to get the Milwaukee Mile ready to go and up to speed. Obviously, like I mentioned, in 2023, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series will be returning for the first time since 2009. So it's been 14 years since the last time NASCAR raced in the Milwaukee area. Now, of course, ARCA is racing there. They're kind of under the NASCAR banner, but Milwaukee is officially returning to NASCAR for the first time in years. This is really, really huge. All of these improvements will be able to go out and fix the Milwaukee area, and I'm really excited to see that Milwaukee is getting all the improvements it needs to be prepared for a return to NASCAR. It's really exciting news for sure, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the Milwaukee Mile is officially returning on the schedule. I think it's really exciting and really great to see that the Milwaukee Mile is coming back. I think it's really fantastic, really great to see, and exciting to see the Milwaukee Mile is returning in 2023 was a pretty big improvement coming into the 2023 season. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Ford. As in the last couple days, there's reports that have emerged of a potential new manufacturer that could be going to Red Bull in 2026. And shockingly, it is actually Ford. According to Adam Stern and Autosport, Ford is a candidate to return to F1 with Red Bull in 2026. Now, later that evening and later the next day, Ford basically came out and said they're not denying the rumors and they are still exploring the possibility of going to, to Formula One once again in 2026 to partner up with Red Bull. Now, to give in perspective how big of a story this is, the last time Ford was in Formula One, because I thought they'd never been in Formula One, but I did my last check, and the last time that Ford was actually in Formula One, was back from 2000 to 2004 when they were partnering up with the Jaguar brand. I can't remember who was on the Jaguar team, per to say, but they were in Formula One nearly 20 years ago. This is really, really huge because this would be the first time we see like a championship caliber Ford organization. Because again, Ford, like I said, has not been in Formula One in many, many years. But I think it would be really, really huge for the Red Bull brand. Now, obviously, there's been a couple other manufacturers that have been rumored to the, the brand. I know Porsche had been one of the manufacturers in the conversations for that. I think Audi had been in the conversations as well to potentially take it. But now it sounds like Ford could potentially be the new favorite to take over the potential of being the Red Bull manufacturer, which would be really, really huge as Ford had a really big day yesterday with some of the other news that they were involved in. But I think this is a really, really huge story overall as a whole that Ford can make its return to Formula One in 2026, which would absolutely be huge and absolutely be a massive, massive bombshell in the Formula One world. So absolutely big news for sure. Again, we'll have to wait and see if it does come to fruition, but it sounds like right now it's just a rumor at the moment, but it does sound like right now we may see some big changes coming for that team in 2026. And now we're going to head to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about the SRX. Now, a good friend of mine, Casey Campbell, interviewed the CEO of the SRX, Don Hawk, and asked him a lot of questions in there. One of the big things that Casey took a lot of those snippets and actually reported on that on Twitter. And it basically, uh, Don Hawk says that there is a lot more driver interest in the 2023 SRX season. And Casey clarified on Twitter that apparently 25 to 30 drivers have shown interest in wanting to join the SRX. Another thing that I saw that was very important is that there are 12 cars going to be once again in the SRX in 2023, so they're not going to be expanding the field. There will be eight full-time entries and four guest cars with celebrity guests 
joining the series. Now, obviously, I think drivers like Tony Stewart will probably be in the series. Bobby Labonte's probably going to be back next year. I think a couple others like Julio Castro Nevis perhaps could be full-time again next year. There's probably going to be other drivers, though, that could be joining the series in 2023 as well. What about Chase Elliott? I think Chase Elliott would be a really great pick up to bring back to the series. He's been a really big person to come in, and I think he'd be fun to have. Haley Deegan, I think she needs to come back and run the series again. I think she's done a really, really fascinating job. She's been fast in her races, respectfully, and I think she'd be really, really fun to have. What about other drivers like, let's say, Dale Jr.? Dale Jr. could come and run the series since it's going to be Thursday night as well. He could come. Kyle Larson, another name I mentioned here. He's another driver that I think would be really fascinating and fun to bring in. Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace brings a lot of fans. I think it'd be fun to have him in this series. And then there could be other drivers that could come in, like legends of the sport, like a Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon would be another name they brought in. And you have to remember that there's going to be, on, is, these races are going to be on Thursday night. So it's not like they're going to be taking up an insane amount of time for these drivers as well. So I think it would definitely make a lot of sense for them to bring as many drivers back as possible and bring some new additions and faces as well. I'm probably going to make a video talking about 10 drivers. It should be in the Asterix probably this weekend, but I think it'd be definitely really cool to see that more driver interest and more people that are showing interest and in potentially trying to join NASCAR in the not, at SRX in the not so distant future. And now we're going to head jump on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Jimmy Johnson. Now, it was reported by Austin Konetsky on Sportsnet. He reports that Jimmy Johnson could make a surprise appearance for Kyle Busch Motorsports during the 2023 season. As Kyle Busch stated in when they had basically announced during the press conference for Kyle Busch Motorsports that Jimmy Johnson's name had been brought up in the conversations. Now, Jimmy Johnson has made a NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series start when it was still the Craftsman Truck Series back in 2008 at Bristol Motor Speedway. He drove for Randy Moss Motorsports and actually allowed a lot of laughs, but unfortunately, around the halfway point in that race, he unfortunately ended up crashing out of the event in that number 81 truck. They, of course, he's a crew chief, I think, might have been Shaq and Alistair in that event, and he was running really well in that event. Now, the big question is, with Jimmy Johnson, we still have some questions around Jimmy Johnson, what number he's going to run for his Cup Series program, because, of course, he'll be joining Petty GMS next year as a co-owner of the team. We have a lot of questions right now as well, basically, on what number Jimmy is going to end up running it there. But we also have questions of what truck race he may end up running. I think there's a couple potential options that Jimmy could do. First, North Wilkes for Speedway for the truck series. Right now, there are a lot of options available. Obviously, there's 10 races for Jack Wood. He's going to run. Kyle Busch is going to run five. So you're still going to have eight races available. North Wilkes will make a lot of sense. Jimmy wants to run a North Wilkesboro. I know he would probably love to run the All Race more than the Truck Series race in North Wilkesboro. But if he wants to run the Indy 500, he would then basically have to go ahead and run this event. So that could be a possibility. But I think the one most logical place where I think he could run is Bristol Motor Speedway. Bristol's during the playoffs, of course, but I think that it would make a lot of sense for him to run the 51 truck at Bristol. It's been 15 years since he's raced at Bristol in the Camp World Truck Series or the Craftsman Truck Series for that matter. And I think Bristol would make a lot more sense than any other track on the circuit. So to me, in my opinion, I think that he should personally run the Bristol Truck Series race in the playoffs. Just my opinion, I think it would make a lot of sense. He had success there in the Cup Series, and I think he actually be very successful. Now, he'll probably be one of the only few guys that I think could win. And I think he honestly, I know it's been a few years, and actually 15 years since he's raced in trucks, but I think Jimmy Johnson will actually be very, very competitive and be up front in a lot of the races, racing that he does. So I think he'll be very, very competitive and show a lot of pace and a lot of speed in that season whenever he runs and decides to run. So I think he's going to be competitive in trucks, and I think he'll be competitive in the NASCAR Cup Series, well, in the Cup Series as well. But I think especially in that truck race, whichever one he decides to run, I think that he'll be extremely competitive and be up front in 2023, which other race he ends up running in 2023. And now we're going to jump on to the first of two major stories in today's episode as we're talking about Front Row Motorsports. As it was announced yesterday, they have officially revealed their 2023 NASCAR Cup Series driver lineup. And honestly, there's no changes coming to the driver lineup in 2023. So Michael Medall will continue driving the number 34 in 2023. And we'll have Travis Peterson as a crew chief, who of course was the engineer for RFK Racing in 2022, will be the crew chief for Michael Medall 
in 2023. Todd Gillen will also return to his respective ride in 2023 as he'll drive the number 38 car with Ryan Burgundy, who had been promoted. He will actually be the crew chief for Todd Gillen in 2023. So while the drivers are not changing in 2023, the crew chiefs are changing. Obviously, Blake Harris will be going to crew chief for Alex Bowman in 2023, so we already knew that was going to be happening. But Seth Barber had been promoted to a technical director role with the team and one of the higher-ups of the team now, which means they needed a new crew chief for him. Ryan Burgundy also, who was the engineer for Michael McDowell last year, so that's a really good pickup for Todd Gillen heading into 2023. When I think about this move from Robo Motorsports, I think about the drivers on the team, and both of them did really good last year. Michael Dow had a career year. Outside of the fact that Michael Dow did not win a race, he had a couple, I think he had two or three top fives last year, and had 12 top tens, which is up there in the top 10 or top 15 drivers who scored top tens last season, considering a lot of drivers got less top tens and top fives. McDowell actually was one of the few drivers that really improved in 2023, and I think he led the most laps he's ever led in a season as well, and was competing for top 20 points for the majority of the season. A lot of that can be attributed to Blake Harris being there, but I'll say Michael McDowell, he did say that he was going to prove with this car, and he really did, and I think McDowell will have a chance to do that. Talking about Todd Gillen, Todd Gillen actually, for a rookie, he didn't have a lot of expectations for Todd Gillen last year, and Todd Gillen actually did a pretty solid job. He actually got his first top five in a number 38 car, the first time a 38 car has gotten a top five since his father, David Gillen, scored a top five at Talladega in 2013. Thank God Eric brought that up because it's been nearly 10 years at earlier this year at the Indy Road Course. Todd Gillen had some impressive runs, was really fast to walk as Glenn led laps as well. I'm cautiously optimistic though on Front Row Motorsports going into 2023, and I'll explain why. I'm not worried about the drivers. I think both drivers are really talented drivers, and I think they'll do as well as they can. I'm worried about all the overhauling of the crew chiefs. They've lost both of their crew chiefs and really brought them a lot of success. And you have to understand that Travis Peterson does have a little bit of crew chief experience, but not a lot of crew chiefing experience. And Ryan Burgundy, I believe this will be the first time he's ever been a crew chief in NASCAR's top three divisions. So that's something that's going to end up, I think, affecting both drivers. I do think McDowell will improve a little bit next year, be a little more consistent. The question is, will it improve his points position? That's one thing to watch going into next year, because I think some drivers are really going to surprise next year and run up front. As for Todd Gillen going next year, I think that he will improve a little bit as well. I don't expect Todd Gillen to really set the world completely on fire, like, like get like a bunch of top 10s, but I think he'll get a couple top 10s next year and contend for top 30 in points. From Rose goals improve next year going into 2023, and I really do believe that they have the potential to do that going into next year. But I think the one thing that really will be interesting to watch is if these crew chiefs can really lead their drivers to a lot of success, and I think that could help out. Now, the one thing that was not actually answered was around Zane Smith. Zane Smith obviously is going to drive a select number of races with Front Row Motorsports in 2023. We know he's going to run the Daytona 500. His number and crew chief had not been revealed at this time, but he'll have a third car in 2023 for Zane Smith. Zane's already confirmed that as well. We'll see who his crew chief is and what sponsor will sponsor him. I would think the other companies like Loves or other companies that work in last year like Speedco could sponsor him. We'll have to wait to see what happens on that front, but front row is really the last major final piece for the Cup Series lineup confirmed. We still need to know about Rick Ware Racing, what their plans are. We need to figure out who will be in that third college cup car, because right now there's a lot of talk that there'll be a third college cup car on a part-time basis, and obviously we still need to know what Jimmy's number is going to be next year, and Rick Ware Racing and some of the fast motorsports announcements we still need to know going into 2023. That being said, though, a lot of big stuff has been going on behind the scenes and a lot of stuff to be announced during the coming weeks. We now know from our Motorsports' lineup and they're set heading into 2023 and they're going to be looking to have a really strong year heading into the 2023 season. And now we're going to head jump on to the final major story of today's episode as we're talking about Haley Deegan. Now, I did a little bit of video on this channel yesterday around the Haley Deegan news. But it was officially announced yesterday that Haley Deegan will drive full-time for Thor Sport Racing in 2023, driving the number 13 truck. This means that the number 98 truck will not be full-time in 2023. They could bring that back for a fifth entry on a part-time basis, but she'll drive the number 13 truck. 
This also confirms a rumor that Thorsport will be officially switching to Ford in 2023. The other drivers will remain the same going into 2023. That means Matt Crafton will drive the number 88, Ty Majeski will drive the number 66, and Ben Rose will drive the number 99. There was other stuff that was confirmed yesterday after I did the video. Rich Lucius, which I already talked a little bit on the channel already, will be moving away from working with Ben Rhodes and will move over to work with Haley Deegan in 2023. It also has been confirmed that Haley Deegan says that she hopes to make some select NASCAR Xfinity Series starts in 2023. Let's talk about this move for Haley Deegan just a second. It's no secret that Haley Deegan has struggled in the Camping World Truck Series or the Craftsman Truck Series for that matter. She has really struggled. Haley Deegan has only scored three top tens in her Truck Series career so far and has not scored a top five. And I believe she's only led a few laps in her Truck Series career up to this point. So the hype for Haley Deegan has probably died down. A lot of you are thinking that. I don't think the hype has completely died for Haley Deegan at this point, and I think this gives her a really strong opportunity going into next year, and here's why. Haley Deegan is going to be in a really fast organization. Thorsport Racing is coming off a very strong season in 2022, where two of their drivers actually made it to the championship four, and they scored three wins last year, two with Ty Majeski, two or three with Ty Majeski, and they scored one win with Ben Rhodes in 2022. So they did have a very solid year, and they actually, I think, had all three of, the, three of their drivers make it to the round of eight, and they really had two of their drivers make the championship four, that being Ben Rhodes and Ty Majeski. It's also something not new that Floor Sports switched into Ford as Floor Sports Racing historically is known as a team that does end up switching manufacturers from time to time. So it's not a surprise that they're switching again. They switch from Chevy to Toyota, then Toyota to Ford, and they're going back to Ford to work. It also helps Ford development as well going to next year. They're switching back to Ford considering Ford does not have a lot of development currently at the moment right now. I know that Mark Rushrook was really shocked that they was really shocked that uh, they switched from Toyota to Ford. They actually really shocked on that. Well, DJR switched back to try to Toyota. But still, this right here is a really big move for Haley Deegan because this is a really big team. So her expectations going into 2023 are going to be really, really high. And I'll explain why. She's going to be in a very top tier truck. But I do think Haley Deegan is going to have potential to really step up and run up front in a lot of races next year. I'm not expecting her to win the championship next year because, again, her truck series stats have improved. But I think Haley Deegan has not only potential to win a race next year or two, I know those are high expectations, but I think Haley Deegan is going to be more competitive. I think she will be a playoff contender 2023, and I think that she will be very competitive, and I think she could still win. We'll have to wait and see what happens. So, But it is a very important year for her because she has struggled in trucks. Also going over and talking about the Xfinity Series stuff, where could she race if she does make some Xfinity Series starts? Obviously, Haley Deegan could if she wants to. She can go to a team like SS Greenlight Racing or maybe Stu Ross Racing opens up a third entry on a part-time basis. But again, that's just a pipe dream at this point if they do open there. I think if she makes select Xfinity Series starts, if she gets the funding and sponsors, she will go over to SS Greenlight, in my opinion, and race over there. And I go back to this move for Haley Deegan a little bit. And I think, like I said, this is a good move for Haley Deegan for her to get an opportunity to race on a full-time basis with Thor Sport Racing is, again, this is a fast truck series organization, and she is going to have a really strong opportunity to be really competitive going into next year. Hype has died down. I really think where the hype has kind of gone back up for is after a really strong run in the Xfinity Series, where she ended up finishing 13th in the Xfinity Series debut. I know that a lot of people wanted her to go full-time in Xfinity, and trust me, I wanted her to go full-time in Xfinity as well. I think that would have made a lot of sense for her career. But I think that when you're in a Thor Sport truck and you're a very fast truck, I don't think that's the end of the world. I think this really was a plan B option, the best plan B option for her. And I'm glad that she took this option so she could be a championship threat, which I don't think she's going to be a championship threat. But I think Haley Deegan will be very, very strong heading into the 2023 season. I'm excited to see what she can do next year. And if you're a Haley Deegan fan, you do have to be really excited that she's getting this opportunity. So I predict she'll get some top fives. Quite a few top 10s next year, and I think she'll be a playoff contender. And I think she's got a really good shot at making the playoffs in 2023, along with I think she will make some select Xfinity Series starts in 2023 as well. I'll wait to see what happens in regards to that, but I think Haley Dean will be very competitive in 2023. So that is for today's short NASCAR news and motorsports news video. 
I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel notifications on so be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as for me on Patreon as well. Links are going to blow over that and comment below your thoughts on today's video. What are your expectations for Haley Deegan in 2023? Let me know in the comments below. And what are your thoughts on the other stories, including Firmware Motorsports announcing their 2023 driver lineup? Let me know in the comments below. Tomorrow on my channel, we're going to have a NASCAR Silly Season update on the channel where we'll go through all the NASCAR Silly Season news. Sunday will likely be the SRX look at 10 drivers who should be in the SRX. And then Monday, I'm not sure what's going to be out on the channel. It could be a team preview, but we're going to have to wait and see what happens. As we get close to the Christmas season, we're about a week away from Christmas, and we got about a week left on the channel to take a little bit of a break. As many of you know, I'm taking a couple days off of YouTube on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time for some more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.